Hi, I'm Siam Benz and welcome to The Naked Word, a show for the everyday woman where our story is your story. Today on The Naked Word, we're talking about divorce and whether or not it's possible to have an amicable divorce. As of 2021, 2.5 million Australians experience divorce. That is a staggering statistic. And it's no surprise that divorces get messy. From haggling over the dinner plates to fighting over custody of the kids or the pets, is it even possible to have an amicable separation? Today on The Naked Word, you get to hear the stories of Natalie, Soraya and Deanna as they went through their process of divorce. And more importantly, what they would do differently if they could do it all over again. So joining me. Hi girls. Hey. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous to talk about divorce yeah. today. Same. It's, it's one a, of those topics. It's a bit of a sticky. Yes. Sticky topic. Isn't yeah. It? Yeah. There's Big. a lot of hurt in there, you know. Yeah. Like a lot of shame involved. Yeah. yeah. Lots of guilt. Mm. Definitely. And and worry about self and the other people that are involved and you know yes. kids my yes. god like yeah. having kids involved is just makes it all so hard absolutely and when i was doing the research and i saw that number 2.5 million i was yeah. so taken aback but then of course when we discussed it all of us have been divorced yeah although nat yours was a separation yeah which in the i mean in the bigger picture is the same mm. yeah the same. Well, we were together for 10 years yeah. So it felt like a divorce. Yeah. And I think that word's got such a heaviness about it. Yes. It's a real separation. It's, it feels worse than a separation, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, yeah which yeah, is absolutely. kind of silly because it literally is the same thing. It's the same thing. You shared a home, you mm -hmm. had a child yeah. together, mm -hmm. you had to go through all of that separation of finances, of, of possessions, of yes. emotional it's exactly like, pulling the same. apart. It's no yeah. different yeah. at yeah. all. It's just yeah. it's a different word attached to it. Yeah. So, uh, Deanna, how, tell, tell us about your divorce. Well, it wasn't amicable. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm definitely in the not amicable divorce camp. Yes. Um, there was a lot of hurt involved. Um, because, I... because you actually fell in love with someone else. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, that was, that was the reason I left my marriage, yeah. ultimately. But, of course, there's many, many things that lead up to that. The biggest thing for me was I had this really, really clear idea about how I wanted the separation and the divorce and the process after that to go. Yeah. I was really focused on maintaining the same life for the kids, right? Yeah. We have two children together. And I wanted to make sure that their school routine didn't change and their daily yeah. processes didn't change too much. So, like, I moved five minutes down the road. Mm. I left the house and moved five minutes down the road, got my own little, yes. little unit that I lived in for a few years. Yeah. And and made sure that the, the school run happened the same yes. way. And we share custody, so we're week on, week off. Yes. And the way we set it up to try and minimise the impact on the kids was that they would go to school from one house on a Friday morning and that day the other parent would pick them up. Yeah. So there was this buffer of a school day in yeah. between that the changeover. So you did your best to sort of keep things yeah. norm, as normal as, as you normal can. As normal as you can, yeah. but it's not really normal. No. You know? We all, we all try to minimise yeah. the impact on our children, Absolutely. but the truth is they're impacted no matter yeah. no matter yeah. which way you slice that cake. Yeah, massively. Um, they're impacted. So so in the separation that happened, when you say it wasn't amicable, yeah. tell tell us about that. It was it was just neither of us were happy with each other. We were very hurt. I was hurt for my reasons, he was hurt for his reasons. Yeah. And and I had this pretty naive um, but very hopeful idea that we would get through that really quickly and, and be able to be friends because we're both so committed to the kids being okay, yes. you know? And it didn't go that way at all. The hurt was too big. Yeah. The pain was too big. And, and I would go into conversations with him with the best intentions yeah. and we would always wind up yelling at each other. Yeah. And one of us would be slamming down the phone and storming away and yeah. hurling insults at each other and both of us would be doing that, you know? It just yeah. was so painful and every conversation almost it felt like ended like that or at the very least had the capacity yeah. to explode and so yeah. it was really tense and lots of anxiety around even making those phone calls and having those conversations and of course there was an awful lot to talk about yeah we had to keep interacting with each other and it just it 
it, it, it kind of fed itself too. So the more yeah. we tried to engage with each other, the worse the, the conflict and the drama and the yuckiness mm. around it became. Mm. And it really got to a point where having those conversations was just the idea of them was really, really anxious. So yes. It's probably taken, like it's nine years ago almost, yeah. and we're only just now getting to the point where we can talk to each other wow. and even have like a little laugh between us. Yeah. Mm. I, I very clearly, like the memory of the first time he laughed on the phone with me, I, I don't think I'll ever lose that. I get a bit goosebumpy thinking wow. about it because I was, I was so desperate for that to happen quickly yes. between mm. us. And Eight and a half years later, we're just getting there. I reckon that's the part that people forget yeah. when you are going through a separation is that it is hard for both yes. parties. No matter what the other person may appear to be like or how they appear to react to things, it is hard for yeah. both people. Yeah. Mm. And I've certainly, myself in my own divorce, uh, similar to you, Deanna, in the beginning, really, really hard. Did not know how to navigate that. Mm. Of course, had never been divorced before. Shared children, shared a home. And I may have had some extraordinary circumstances mm. in the middle of all of that. My, my husband at the time had a motorcycle accident, mm. uh, which was so unfortunate, but we had a beautiful life. Mm. So the separation as a result of the accident uh, was just something I was not prepared for. Mm. So I'm heartbroken, yeah. he's heartbroken, and we're just two heartbroken people yeah. trying to navigate two little children mm. in the middle of all of that. And, and I had to really see his pain for what it was yep. and then see my pain and not judge him when oh, he that's said something. It's so hard too, yeah. you know, when you're it's in so the hard. pain. It's yeah. very hard not to just point the finger and go, you're just being an awful person right yep. now. And it's your fault that it's like this. Yes. And it's not, it's yeah. not. It takes mm. two to tango mm. it all the time. It absolutely does. 100%. Nat, yeah. you are huge on personal responsibility. Yeah. Mm. You're probably the one person in my life who does that the best. Mm. Looking at yourself and reflecting on yourself and going, what have I done to contribute to the situation? No matter what the situation, even when the rest of us have gone, nah, it's not your fault. Mm. You always sit back and go, well, what did I enable? Well, I've always believed that you can't have an issue without two parties bringing both energies to a space. Yeah. So when... I separated with my long-term relationship. It, I, I didn't look at my part for a long time. It took me many years to look at that. And I think it was because I was so hurt. And it was the first time that I hadn't really looked deeply. And it was because I could do that with friends. And I could do that with mm. family. And I could do that with my, with my boy. Mm. But when it came to the matters of the heart, really of the heart, deep love, looking at my part was hard. Yeah. And so did I you blame know, him? I did in the beginning and I don't now. I know what I did. Yeah. I focused on work and I focused on the future and I focused on, on growing a legacy business. But can I just, can I just say that? I think we all do that. We all blame the other person initially. Mm. Yeah, I think in some I think, capacity. In I some think capacity. we all. I think we all would because when yeah. you're hurt, it's shame, blame, or justify. Yeah, <laughs> it's those one of those yeah. three yeah, things yeah, yeah. every time. It's like a, this is shameful, or I'm justifying, or I'm blaming, and and that is so unhealthy. Mm. And I've learnt along the way that I had to own my part. This man was craving for my love, and I was more in love with my business. Mm. Oh man. What was it like looking? Like what was do you remember the moment where you went I'm just going to look at myself? I do. What and I like? I remember sitting in it thinking I will never do that to another human again. Mm. You know, it's not that important. My business and success was not that important and now at the age of 48, mm. I realize that 10 years on from my or 8 years on from my divorce of mm. my separation, I'm now not really all that concerned about business and success. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm more concerned about living life to the fullest and enjoying the people I have in my yeah, life yeah. to the fullest. Yeah. And so it's really changed. And, you know... Um, That's really insightful, um, Nat, Nat. Even I got something from that, just being able to look back and see what it was that you contributed 
to that. Mm -hmm. And obviously there are two sides to every pancake, even the flattest pancake, <laughs> there are two sides. Um, and so to look back and go, look, yeah, I, I was too focused on work. And I didn't see that at the time. I thought I was mm. providing for my family. And I think men do that as well mm. in the providing for their family. Yeah. Think about every man say that. Mm. Um, so that was, yeah, that's really insightful. I kept saying all the time, I was like this before. Why should I have to change? Yeah. He fell in love with me because this is the type of person oh. that I was. And then I went, oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but it was, it, I definitely owned my part in that. Yeah. And was your divorce, not your divorce, sorry, your separation, yeah. was it very painful when you went through it? I was numb. Yeah. Mm. I was really numb. I go to numb often, yeah. you know. Um, I was very numb. And so who decided to separate? Was it you or him? We would both say differently, but I think we were both forced away from each other. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, he had warned me many times that he was going to leave. And when he sort of said it the fifth time, I said, just leave then. Okay. Mm. So he was giving me warnings yeah. and I was so you not knew it was listening. Coming. And then I got my defences up and went, okay, that's Fine. it. Off you go. <laughs> and Deanna, and who, then, yeah. who asked for the divorce in your situation? Oh, well, I left. Yeah. Right? I, I took myself out of the space because I was the one that was no longer committed mm. to the relationship yeah. being a monogamous, just the two of us space. Mm. I was no longer committed to that. Yeah. Right? And so I left. Yes. I took it upon myself. It did not feel right to ask him to leave a home that he was still fully invested in. Yes. Okay. And I, I wasn't, yes. right? So I took myself out of the space. Yeah, great. And I will never, it, it just makes me want to cry, I will never forget sitting on a couch with him telling him that I was done. It was the hardest thing I think I've ever done. Harder even than telling the kids. But telling him, getting myself to the place where I could say, I'm sorry, I, I'm done, I have to go, was, it took a long time and it was really, really hard. Saying those words, I'd sat there waiting, trying to get the words to come out of me, and it was so hard. But I had to say it because it was the right thing to do. Mm. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> oh, oh. No, I feel that because that is the pain of everybody in yeah. who goes through divorce. That is the pain right there. Nobody wants gets married with the intention to sit down and go, I don't want to be in this anymore mm -hmm. with you. Yeah. Um, Soraya, your divorce was messy oh. and I know you quite well, you, you were the good wife, mm. you were the good wife. Yeah. Tell us about what that experience was. Yeah, absolutely. So like Nat, you were so focused on the business and your career. For me, I was so focused on being the good wife. Mm -hmm. I got married really young, so I was 18 when I got married and so wow. I, yeah, yeah. Mm. So it was, I was still just like That's straight so out. That's so young. <laughs> it was really young really young. So straight out of school and I had gotten married and I was introduced to his family and you know it was and for me the, the, my first thing was I want to learn what it means to be a good wife. Yeah. And I had a lot of influence from his family and the family model which was really heavily steeped in um, traditional village culture. Yeah. And so I learned a lot from my mother-in-law and yeah. his cousins and his family so it was really focused around family. And so I learnt how to be a good wife mm. from his family. Mm. And the more I learnt, the more I wanted to be accepted. Mm. I felt like an outsider because there was this whole sort of structure and unit around how they lived. Mm -hmm. And I didn't quite understand it because I didn't match culturally. Yeah. And so I tried to fit in and I tried to belong. So I used to just do whatever I could to feel accepted right. and to feel a sense of belonging. Mm. Yeah. And that led me to go, oh, okay, this doesn't make sense to me, but I'll do it. Yes. Um, to appease my mother-in-law. to yeah. put, And you're to, 18 years old. Yeah. You're still trying to figure out who you are. Absolutely. And yeah. for me, I'm taking this as gospel because I'm so young and I'm thinking, oh, so that's what it means to be a good wife. And so I did a lot of that in the beginning. My intent was to be accepted and to feel a sense of belonging and to do the right thing for the love of my husband and the love of his family, which led to the disappearance of me 
and I just was so focused on being silent and doing everything that people expected from me. Yeah, right. I was Lost. never ever a good girl growing yeah. up. I was quite <laughs> sporty and rebellious and Taekwondo. all those kinds of things. Taekwondo, Taekwondo yeah, all of that. Yeah. And then when I got married, it was like this whole different persona came in. And then I... So you lost yourself? Mm -hmm. I did completely. I didn't even know who I was. Wow. I had my two children, and then by the time I was in my mid-twenties, my children were in school, and I was left to myself during the day. And I was like, oh, okay. So in their traditional, you know, sort of mentality and culture, it was like, you know, women stay home, and you don't really... I would go and support my husband at work and everything else, and he had his yeah. own place, but... I was like, who am I? I started to ask all these questions about yeah. what it is that I wanted. Yeah. And then I wanted to go to school. And, you know, I wanted to go to uni or I wanted to start pursuing some of mm. my own interests. Mm. And that's when it all started to implode slowly, slowly. Did right. the real because, Soraya start showing up? Yeah. Mm. And my ex-husband had seen eight years of a version of me. And then all of a yeah. sudden, I start to come up and start wanting things differently. Yeah, right. And... He was really quite insecure about the relationship and, you know, I was always like the cherished wife. I was the best wife ever. Everyone would always say how great I was. Yeah, right. So when I started to change, he started to panic, but it didn't seem like that mm. at the time. Mm. I just felt like it was control mm. yeah. and insecurity mm. and he's, you know, doing all these things that's mm. stopping me. And so I felt like I had to fight to have my own identity. Mm. And then that's when it all imploded and exploded. Yeah. And there was a build-up of resentment that I hadn't even spoken about yeah. for years and years. That you years. didn't know you had. It was just this sort of floating through and doing everything that everyone required until one day I actually thought about who I was yeah. and what I wanted. And then... It hit you all at once. Just what was like an implosion. What did yeah. it feel like? Um, yeah, it just felt overwhelming. It felt like I was being, again told yes. what you want is not okay. Yes. It, was, it felt like I was being told that pursue, going out for coffee with your girlfriends, you sh you, you've always spent time with my family. Why do you want that now? Yeah. Like I was changing and anything that I wanted mm. was just not okay. Yeah. Everyone was like, well, you know, you've been a certain way for so long. They couldn't actually accept that I wanted something different. Yep. Within the realms of still being married, yep. there was nothing there that was different. It was just I wanted to pursue things that were different. Yes. Mm. And there was a lot so of... So did you feel like you had no choice? I felt like there was so much... But to get out? Yeah. So when that happened, it was like a, a, a really big feeling of rebellion that came up in me. Yeah, got it. Which was... <laughs> yeah. There was eight years of this do, keep doing, keep doing, keep doing, keep yes. doing. And then, because I was so silent, until I actually spoke up, I was resentful. Yes. I was like, I have done and given everything yes. I could to this marriage. Yeah. And I want to go and work, or I want to be able to have a part-time job. Absolutely. Within the frames of still being able to look after my kids. Yes. And that's not, that's not acceptable. And the consequence of doing that is the reaction from everybody around the situation that makes it even worse. Mm. Mm. Oh, that, it makes that it terrible. even worse judgment from mm. other people it's painful mm. and you feel rejected you can feel rejected and i'm sure that happens to both parties not just women yeah uh, both parties if you could do your divorce situations differently what would you do differently oh gosh nat oh i i you know i've thought about this many times mm. and i think what i would do is 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 really learn to communicate better and actively participate in quality time because I saw every gap in every day as an opportunity to work yeah mm. and or be a mum yep um, but I didn't give him what he needed which was quality time right mm. because I don't know how to sit still yeah so that was something I needed to work on personally, mm. and I so will... like figure out what your partner needs. Yes, and, what's and his and love language? Yeah. yeah, what is his love language? <laughs> his la love language. You know, you would think with men it would be sex, but yeah. or intimacy. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, for for him, it was quality time. Yeah, mm. yeah, it was quality okay. time. It was okay. number one. So that's what I would do differently: is learn the love languages. <laughs> and make sure focus on that. Yeah. Dee, what would you do differently next time? Oh, communication is the same. Yeah, bloody hell. I, I just, 
I, I would like to think, yeah. you know, that I would talk earlier yeah. and, and more courageously. Yes. Like just have more guts yeah. to have the hard conversations. Because I like, I tiptoed around conversations, definitely. Yeah. I would like say, well, well, this particular thing is bothering me or I feel like this about our relationship or yeah. I might have some feelings for someone else. I even said those yes. words, you know. And But when it wasn't just taken as like a, an invitation for an open conversation which yeah. as if it would do you know yeah. what I mean like if yeah. someone came to me and said I think I might have this thing going on my reaction would probably be everything's okay yes. <laughs> yes. you know like no that's fine we'll work. everything's fine don't worry everything's good oh. yeah. you know I think I would push harder into the difficult parts of those conversations. And I be would. more direct. Yeah. yeah. Like we need to be more direct yeah. and actually talk about the way yeah. that we feel. Yes. Yeah. Instead of everything. Trying to protect the other person or protect myself. Because yeah. that's what I was doing. I was trying to be nice about it. Yeah. Yes. And I was also, you know, like we've talked, we've talked about conflict in our, you know, yes. group and we've, we've talked about the way we manage that. And uh, for me, I think I was avoiding the conflict. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I would try not to avoid the conflict. Yes. Please face conflict head <laughs> on. Face conflict Sorry, head on. what would you do differently? I would have definitely gotten to know who I was first. Before getting married. Yeah. yeah. You really were so young. Yeah, so that's the thing. So I would really have a, a more assured sense of self yeah. to some degree. Yeah. Um, to know who I was as a person, to know my values, mm. what I can and can't compromise. Yeah. Mm. And so, so valid. Yeah. So, so hard valid. to know when you're 18, though. Like, yeah, exactly. How can you? Exactly. But looking back, yeah. I know a lot of 18 year olds that are quite, you know, I mean, you're always in a Mature. sense of discovery yeah. for self. Yeah. There's always a discovery process. Yeah. But 18, I was really naive. And mm. it was like I had not even seen the world. I didn't yes. know much at all. Didn't it's a know. Life experience. Discovered. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Discover think, who it is that you are yeah. and learn to know the difference between compromise and compromising who you are mm. yeah wow that's a big thing mm. that's a really interesting distinction yeah. because i think we get a bit caught up in compromise means giving up yes but bits of ourselves yeah. selves and i don't think it does that's yeah. so insightful yeah, like that is. idea that we can compromise without compromising who we are yeah. and, and our integrity and our yeah. values and what we stand for and who we believe yes. we are as a person. Yeah. Yeah, that's yes. beautiful. And I really like um, that. Sorry, sorry I, just, I just wanted to say um, that what I would do differently would be to be kinder to mm. the other person. Um, in I know I've said it a couple of times now, but in recognising it's difficult for the other person as well. Yeah. That we didn't go into this hoping to get divorced. We hope to yeah. stay together. Yeah. And, and to treat the other person as such and not mm. judge them and not take what they do personally. Mm. Oh, gosh. It, it, it ain't about you. <laughs> it ain't about, they're not yeah, thinking about yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Ladies, thank you so, yeah. so much. Uh, although I came into the conversation with some angst, I, I definitely learned some things and mm. loved the sharing. Mm. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. And thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.